Hey, Eileen, um, I hope this is helpful. I'm going to try and explain the difference between palpated and auscultated blood pressure. So, um, we started drawing over here. We've got our, oh, that didn't work out. There's an R uh, with fingers done at the end. And then we're going to draw, these are your fingers right here. One finger. Here's another finger. This is your fingers down here doing a palpated pulse or palpated blood pressure. So let's think about this. If if we know for a fact that this person is 120 over 80, then if we go down here and check their pulse, we're going to feel a pulse every time the heart goes into systole. Every time it goes into diastole, we won't feel anything. What that means is that when the heart squeezes and pushes blood, it's generating 120 millimeters of mercury, or 120 torr, if you want to look at it that way. And then when it's in diastole, the pressure inside that artery doesn't go to zero, it is 80. So your heart, if you, if you were to graph it, it would look like this all the time. Boom, boom. And this would be systole. And all of this would be diastole. Hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so you're down here palpating this blood pressure and uh, you're palpating this pulse. You can feel the pulse. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put a tourniquet on. The tourniquet is something that we call a BP cuff. So there's your dial and uh, the cuff. Like this, so it's got a tail that goes out like this. Okay, so if I blow this cuff up to 110, I can still feel the pulse because I know the heart is generating 120 during systole. So it can, buy, it can overcome the 110 and get down here. Once I get up to 130, I can no longer feel a pulse down here. Now if I'm at 130 and I decrease it to 121, I still can't feel a pulse because we have 120 coming from the heart trying to get past 121 in the cuff, that won't work. But once I go to 120, now the blood flow can get through and I will feel a pulse. And so with a palpated blood pressure, I'm only going to get the 120. I'm not going to get the 80, but I will get the 120. Okay, so that's a palpated pulse. Now, let's think about if we took a stethoscope and put it right here. A stethoscope goes over here and goes out like this. There's my stethoscope. Now, let's think about this. The cuff is at zero. The cuff is at zero. I'm not going to hear anything right here. However, I would feel something right here. The question is, why won't I hear anything here? Because if I'm feeling something down here at the wrist, at the radial pulse. I know blood's coursing past here. Why am I not hearing it? Okay, I'm going to red. Here's the artery that is going from here, here, through here. The blood is moving through here like this. It's not bumping into anything. It's like a big, deep, slow-moving river. It doesn't make a lot of sound. So I'm not going to hear anything right here. But I will feel it right there. Now let's pump this cuff up to, say, 130. And so this artery is now going to look like this because that cuff has really squeezed in right here. Do I hear anything here? No. 
Will I feel anything here? No. But as I let the cuff off, this is going to be this is going to be one thirty. This is going to be one twenty. At one twenty, will I hear anything here? Yes, I will. Will I feel something here? Yes, because the one twenty is able to get past the one twenty of the cuff. The thing is, though, the blood is now bouncing into itself and bouncing all over like this. So now it's kind of like a, a creek that's running over rocks. The rocks are getting in the way, and that's going to make sound. That's going to make a babbling brook in, in, in an artery. That's going to let me hear something right here. So as I continue to let the cuff off, the artery gets like this. I will hear less and less, but I will hear some. But at some point, the artery is going to be uncompressed by the cuff. The blood will flow through like in our beginning, in the beginning. It's not bouncing into anything, so I'm not going to hear anything here. I will still feel it here. So the last time that the blood is bouncing off the walls, right here, the last time it's bouncing off the walls will be 80. And that's our diastolic pressure. I hope that explained the difference between palpated and auscultated BP. If that's not clear, please write me a note and let me know uh, what I what I didn't get, what I didn't make clear. And uh, good luck in the class. Hope, hope you uh, continue to uh, ask questions. I'll be glad to point things out.